Good morning, greater acquaintance, Good morning. church family, friends, all those that are online with us. We thank you for joining us today. For this is the day the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice in it. Amen. 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 So before we move any further, my name is Reverend Eric D. Lamore, and I come to you today from Greater Acquaintance Missionary Baptist Church, where I serve under Pastor Kevin Wilkes. If we could just go right into prayer. We bow our heads together, become on one accord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you, Father God, as I continuously say for your mercy and your grace. Oh, we thank you, Father God, for this new opportunity, Father God, to hear your word. We thank you, Father God, for the word, for the word, Heavenly Father, that's been bestilled within me today, Father God. So I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Father God, I pray that hearts be changed and minds be changed. And we leave here just a little bit different than we came. Not just here, but all those even watching at home. That it touches homes, Heavenly Father, and travels through the streets, Heavenly Father, and goes back to the workplace, Heavenly Father. Yes. And we keep this word moving forward, and we'll be so careful to give you all the glory and all the praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. I am removed. Scripture reading will be coming from the book of Luke. We'll be reading the book of Luke, the eighth chapter. Verses 26 through 39 in our Burgundy Bibles, that will be page 1060. And all those that have it, if they can please stand for those that are capable for the reading of God's word. And when we all have it, please say amen. 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 Page 1060 in the Burgundy Pew Bibles. Luke, the eighth chapter, verses 26 to 39. Amen. Amen. And the words reads as such. And they arrived at the country of the Gerardines, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him. And he was kept, about, kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there and there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain. And there besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. And then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it to the city in the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils was healed. The whole multitude of the country of the Gardenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and went up into the ship and returned back again. 
Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away saying, return to thine own house and show how great things God have done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. Amen. This morning's message is entitled, Battling for Territory. Battling for Territory. Now, usually, when we hear this preached, we focus on Jesus delivering the man from these many demons and going back to tell everyone how Jesus had healed him. But today, I'm here to tell you, this battle is bigger than just you. Come on now. The devil is attacking us daily because we have something he wants. Yeah, come on. Now let's go to scripture. Jesus has just come off of a very rocky boat ride with the disciples. Now he's reached dry land and stepped off the boat into a place called the Gerardines. Now, Gadar is part of 10 providences that were similar. But see, Jesus went there to effect change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as he jumps off the boat, landed, looking around, before you know it, now a wild, hairy, gnarled, grotesque figure comes running towards Jesus. And you ask, how do I know that? Because they said that he was placed in tombs, placed alone. So we know he did not go get a haircut. We know that he had not had proper hygiene. And we could just imagine what the time alone and the debris and the de did to his face. So we're just going to picture how this man looked coming unto Jesus. But then he got close and fell to Jesus' feet and began to worship. Now, he is worshiping at the foot of Jesus. But then the next thing he says is, Jesus. Don't torment me. Mm. In a way, he comes back to say, I adore you. Please don't attack me. Mm. Now imagine at this time, being a disciple and seeing this. The guy is doing the right thing. He's worshiping Jesus. Yes. But there's something wrong with his worship. As he worships Jesus at his feet. Now Jesus is having a conversation between him and this demonic man. And I think this conversation got the disciples' attention mm -hmm. because this man with these demonic spirits that's worshiping at Jesus' feet. He called Jesus the Son of God. Well, yeah. Now, at this time, most of his disciples didn't even know who they were with. Mm -hmm. But this demonic field man knew he was bowing to the Son of God. Well, and it's something how the devil can know a little bit more about the Father than you. Come on now. Come on, preacher. Huh. Come on. Make it plain. At this time, the disciples didn't even know who they were with. 
They weren't at the virgin birth. They weren't at the Jordan River. They knew him as rabbi or teacher or master. But this man called him the son of God. Mm. Now, Jesus, in his own graceful way, began to somewhat negotiate with these spirits. The spirit says, if we must leave the man, don't make us leave the territory. Come on. And I say that because it specifically says in verse 31, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Let me explain. When you go out into the deep, the deep is translated in Greek to Abiasos, meaning the underworld, the abode of the dead of Satan, the imprisonment of mm -hmm. demons, where there's no return. Well, these devils knew that if Jesus was to cast them off into the deep, they would have no more effect on this territory. So that's why I said it was a bit of a negotiation because Jesus was going to do what he was called to do anyway, but he heard the demons out. Now Jesus cast the demons, which are called legion, out of the man into a herd of swine. Pigs, for those that don't know. And the pigs ran down the hill and drowned. Now, all of the herdsmen, those are the ones that care for the pigs, seen what had happened and ran to the city to tell them all what he's seen and what they well, witnessed well, well. Jesus do. Come on. This is where it's starting to get good, y'all. Work with me. Because, see, the city came to see Jesus. Let me repeat it. The city came to see Jesus mm -hmm. because of a demon. Mm. If it had not been for the demon, it would not have been a miracle. That's right. That's right. If it had not been for the demon, there would not have been a revival. <laughs> Come on now. There wouldn't be a blessing to move forward without this demon. Amen. The city came out to see Jesus because of a demon. You are under attack for a reason. There is a reason that we are daily under a attack. That's right. That's right. Come on, preacher. Come on. See, because Jesus went through a storm to get to this man. Uh. This man is significant. One guy, this stinky, smelly, cut up, demonic man, Jesus went through a storm to get to him. Hmm. And if you're wondering about this storm, all you have to do is read the Three, four verses right before this mm. to get a clean understanding. Come on now. In fact, Jesus said, let us pass over to the other side. So they even went there with an intention of that specific place. The other side. They were already in direction, but Jesus said there's something over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something over there that I need to do. Come on. There's things somewhere over there 
that we need to do. Protect your territory. Jesus said, let us expand our territory. So whenever you get ready to expand your territory, expect for a demon to show up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somewhere, whenever you get ready to bust you a move, the devil is going to show up. That's right. Every time. As long as you stay over there, broke, depressed, beat up. Come on, preacher. Everything's gonna be all right. <laughs> but as soon as you ready to make your move and try to break away from where you came from into new territory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's when the devil gets busy in your life. That's right. Come on, preacher. And most times, there's a storm that doesn't even seem to connect to your goal and your vision. Because it's a well thought out attack. I'll go even further. The enemy knew who you were going to be before you even got there. He's seen the calling on your life. The problem is you don't. And he does some stuff to us early in our lives. Sometimes things that happened 20, 30 years ago to try to mess up and distract you from being who God has called you to be. Come on. The storm always occurs before you get the territory. Mm. I guarantee you, there's some people here that almost died at birth, been molested at a young age, been treated bad come on, come by their parents, just thrown completely to the wolves, three, four, five, six years old, early in life, before anybody can see what you are going to be, the devil was already throwing storms yeah. in your direction. Yeah. But see, the storm started before the boat landed. <laughs> if Jesus would have never rebuked the storm, they wouldn't have made it to their new territory. Come on now. Mm. Now, what I didn't know as I continued to read and study that the Gadarenes was inhabited by Gentiles. But then, at that time, no traditional Jews would be taking care of pigs. That's right. Right, brother. Now, when I hear Jesus talk about the other side, I wonder, is he talking about geographically or nationality? Mm, come on, Richard. Make it. Because he was doing more than just crossing regions, but also crossing cultures. When you do that, when you get different individuals of different nationalities, white Christians, black Christians, Pakistani Christians, African Christians, all together to worship the name of the Lord in one accord, the devil is upset. Yes, 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 yes. Hmm. We never know what's up Jesus' sleeve. We just got to keep reading. So when you do that, the devil gets very upset. See, the demons weren't worried about leaving the man. They was just worried about 
them leaving the territory. That devil isn't interested in you. He don't care nothing about you. That devil ain't interested in you. Ain't about nothing you got going on. You ain't that beautiful. We ain't that cute. We ain't that special that the devil just choose to pick on you. He just wants a part of your territory. Mm. See, he's after your region, your home, your children, mm. your future. Hallelujah. There's something that he wants. And he don't care about this thing here because he'll use anybody to distract you. He'll use your mama, your daddy, your child, your brother, your husband, your wife, your church family, your co-worker. He don't care. He will use them. And you better be careful about how open you leave your spirit. Because I'm going to tell you it's the truth. Spirits jump. Yes, they, yes, they do. Right. Yes, they do. Shoot, you better be careful. See, it's important to guard your spirit. Your spirit man is where it's at. <laughs> they jump. Place to place. Who? Who? They get done with you, they down with another. Jump. So don't be distracted on what he's doing to you now. Stop taking the fight so personal. Ah, it's not personal. Not our battle, brother. It's <laughs> about stopping you from getting to your territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at all the storms you faced before you even knew who you were in your life. Look back. Think about the things that you faced even before you even were saved, even be before you even thought about sitting in the greater twenties, any church house. Think of the storms that had already been flowing over and over, That's season right, after right, season yeah. in your life. Come yeah. on, preacher. Make it plain. Make it plain. See, you become victimized sometimes over stuff you can do nothing about. But see, the devil knew you were going to be something. And you know something about this that's funny? He is scared to death of you. Yeah. If he wasn't, he wouldn't be fighting you like this. He's scared to death. He is in shaking boots, hoping and praying that you don't get a hold of nobody that's going to give you some word, or you just pick up the Bible yourself and just look in the back and put it into your situation. He's hoping and praying that's something that you will not do. Because now you're going to be messing with his territory. Mm. You don't pull out supernatural warfare against somebody that's not a threat. Come on, preacher. If he wasn't scared, why would he start a storm way over there in your life? To distract you from what's going on right here. Well, come on, preacher. He started that storm way on the other side, as Jesus said, to prevent him from trying to get to his territory. So he starts early before he or she could do some of these things here. He go catch you early. Before you can learn scripture, before the anointing is placed upon your life, he tries to catch you while you're weak. Mm, mm. He tries to catch you before you get washed in the blood to fix date a certain type of mindset of failure. Come on, preacher. Make it plain, brother. He'll send those storms. Like I said, you'll be three, four, five years old. That will affect you for the rest of your life if you let them. How many people do you know that tells you the reason why they are where they are right now in life is because of something that happened 20, 30 years ago? Come on. And stand on it. And think it's okay. It's not okay. 
if that's your position at this time, he has you in a tomb. What are the storms Jesus has to come through to get to you? What storms, what are the walls, what are the barriers you have to build up? You have built up. You've built them up, and sometimes we don't even know we've built these walls and barriers. Because some of us build them up consciously, and some of us build them up unconsciously. But they're in our mind. So that's how they get stuck. They're unconscious thoughts that become stuck thoughts. But see, I thank God that we serve a Jesus that never sleeps nor slumbers. See, this Jesus woke up in the middle of the storm and just said simply, peace, be still. Oh, peace, be still. He got out of the boat and this man was in bad shape. The devil had put him in a place of loneliness. Who's been there before? Loneliness in a tomb. He was cutting himself. Yeah, I want you all to really realize this, that you don't have to have a knife to cut yourself. You can do that without that knife. I'm going to be like this forever. I'll never make it through this. Those kinds of cuts. Come on, come on. Do you think you got this way from your own thoughts? Hmm. Do you think your spirit, your mind, just shifted you to a place to think these things about yourself? I don't care how much failure is behind me because I know there is nothing but light come on, come in on, front man. of me. Come on. Say that. You just say that. See, even though sometimes we could be away from our haters, completely away from our haters, but some will still be in the tomb cutting ourselves. We don't even need an audience to beat ourselves up no more once we got to a certain place. We don't even need nobody to beat us down because we couldn't do it ourselves. Yes. Come on, Freak. The devil that made you a professional at whooping your own tail. Come on. Come on. Make it plain, brother. See, the devil was enjoying this. The devil was enjoying this, telling him. You ain't going to never be nothing. You ain't going to never be loved. You will never be happy. You will never be blessed, you dirty man. You will never be free. I'm going to keep you bound and shackled in them chains Come of on, life. Man. Come on. You will never get yourself together the way that you are. Who is going to look at you or want you? With all that hair on you, all that funk on you. Who going to want on. you with them craters all in your face? Who do you think going to want you? Come on, preacher. Then what do we do? Come on. Go right back to our tomb. Cutting ourselves. Cutting ourselves. The devil is a liar. Ah, ah, ah. The devil is a liar. Yes, he is. Come on, preacher. No. This, though, you are not the point. It was the territory. Those people, the devil didn't want Jesus on his territory. The devil had influenced this man with so many demons that they had to call him legion. Let me explain what that means. Legion, a legion, is an organization of thousands they had marked somewhere I read 6,000 Roman soldiers. But I'm not going to say that because it wasn't in the word. But thousands, thousands of soldiers from hell. You need to hear that. These are thousands of soldiers 
from hell. That means ain't nothing good coming from anything they try to get you. <laughs> you don't use your best trained soldiers in a fight unless it's real. <laughs> See, what we fighting is an organized gang that's just for you. To bring you down and that's out right. of your territory. That's right. Come on, preacher. The strategy is only about territory. And I'm going to continue to say that because I want it to sink in. That it's not about you. It's ah, about your territory. Come on. Come on. It's about what you shall be. Maybe not what you are right now. But this is about where you shall be. Your destiny. It's about the purpose that God has in your life. It's about the people that you will influence. It's about the people that you will pray for healing for. It's about the lives that you will touch. It's about you finishing that degree. It's about you going and open that business up. It's about the position that you're not even in yet. He's trying to attack you before you can even get to your blessing. But you sitting back in your tomb in your cave, most of us is a bedroom, sitting back in that bedroom just licking your wounds, cutting yourself, licking your own blood, just sitting there telling yourself, beating your mind up what you won't do, what you can't do, knowing that you can all things through Christ that strengthens you. You can do all things. Get out that cave. You are blessed. Come on, preacher. Man. Shoot, sometimes it looks like in this situation, the devil got more faith in you than you. <laughs> that wasn't funny. Because you know what? He believed in you when you didn't even believe in yourself. Because he wouldn't send nobody to fight you if he didn't believe you was going somewhere. You sitting back, kicking yourself, thinking you ain't going to do nothing in life. And the devil believes that you will. Come on, come on, preacher. Make it plain. Make it plain. He wouldn't be at you like this if you didn't have something. Ah. That's Man. Oh. Right there. You don't get nothing else. See? <laughs> that's why it's time to stand up and come out of them tombs. Mm. And be what God has called us to be. You're never get to your territory in this tomb. You'll never get there cutting yourself, giving yourself a beat down. You'll never be what God has called you to be, living with the dead. You'll never, come on, come on. never be what God calls you to be because you know what? In the tomb is darkness. So he already got you because you're living in darkness already in this dark world. Then you're putting yourself in dark places. You're putting yourself around dark people. You will never be free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Unless you step out of that tomb. Shout it to God that I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. Hey, y'all must not be in nothing. I missed some stuff. Shout to God. I am coming out of this. I am coming out of my cave. I don't care how I'm coming out of it with the devil on my back. I'm going to carry him, but I'm coming out of this cave. I'm coming out of this place. I'm coming out of this depression. I'm coming to see Jesus. I don't care if I'm depressed. I don't care if I'm oppressed. I don't care if I'm possessed. I'm coming to Jesus. I'm going to come to Jesus, and when I get to him, I'm going to fall on my face, and I'm going to worship him, and I'm going to say, Daddy, I thank you for poo. I thank you for coming through that storm for me. I thank you for believing in me. I thank you for calming the storm. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Woo. When you get to him, drop on your knees and worship him. And I guarantee you one thing. It's going to be a good worship. Because the worship ain't coming from no demonic field people. The worship is coming from one of his. And when the worship is coming from one of his, then the word of God is activated. The word of God is activated. Because now you're falling, you're worshiping at his knees. And then he said, oh my God, get up, son. 
that good and faithful servant. I got something for you. This was just a season. Then you read the book, Job. These things do happen. But I'm telling you, I'm going to give you double for your trouble. I'm going to bless you. And over there, I'm going to bless you. Over here, I'm going to bless you. Over there, and I'm going to bless you on the other side. Battle is for your territory. 